Bear on Bears fans, the schedule is here, and my God, we are excited. People are putting out think pieces. No football has been played, and yet the Chicago Bears can go 17-0. and 0. Right. Here we go. Pat the designer, Jason McKee, reacting, giving you our thoughts on this schedule release for the Chicago Bears podcast. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page. Leave that five-star review. Y'all know what to do. J-Mac. How are you, my friend? It's only been, what, five hours since we right. last saw each other, and we right back at it again. That's how we do. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, the anticipation is, is it's, it's been, you know, long overdue. Schedule's out. We know where we're going to be. We know who we're playing. The stage has been set. The matchups have been paired up. And, uh, you know, we were talking before we got on, before we got on there. I'm looking, I'm mapping out my high school schedule with the, with the, with the schedule. So the schedule release is big for me, not just because, they're going to release, uh, you know, a, a clip or something like that on the Bears website. But it's big for me to make sure that my high school schedule, you know, pairs up well with this with the Bears schedule. So absolutely, they were going to make it work again, man. I got to make sure I take care of my team first and foremost and then go, you know, do my job with the Bears. So I'm excited. A lot of hey, good man. matchups. Um, it's going to be good, Pat. I think I think the Bears got some good matchups. It's going to be some good football. We we got to do that. Uh, we we got to get that schedule out here as well. Yeah, I mean we got to start putting yeah. that out on the show yeah. so that uh, people know when to pull up, what time to pull up. Yeah, I mean it's a uh, it's a big deal. There's gonna be some interesting some interesting football down at Carmel this year. I'm I'm really excited. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean let's let's get into this. Let's get into this schedule, J Mac. I, I want to know before we sit here and go through it because we're gonna go through it game by game, look at these games, all of that mm -hmm. stuff. But what was your initial thought when you saw the schedule? We had heard that the Bears have the third easiest yeah. schedule, but it all depends on how things play out. What was your initial thought when you saw this schedule? Yeah, I mean, the first thing, you know, we got a glimpse of our opponent. So it's just a matter of we already know who we're playing. It's just a matter of when and what order we're playing them. But uh, some good games, you know, I think there's going to be like obviously the first game against the Titans. You got a young quarterback, Will Levis, facing off against Caleb Williams, another young quarterback. Uh, you know, Will has some pieces on that offense. DeAndre Hopkins is there. Calvin Ridley is there as well. Uh, the Bears, we're still trying to see what Caleb Williams will be. And, you know, will he live, live up to expectations? You know, will this offense take off with all the weapons that we added this offseason? You know, can this defense pick up where they left off last season? Uh, you know, getting the takeaways. You know, really controlling and, and, and taking offenses out of their game. So right off the bat, I think the Bears fans get a good treat at home, you know, against a team that wasn't really good last year, new head coach and everything. Um, and then, you know, I look at week two is going to be a treat. I think that's the Sunday night game against the Texans. Oh, yeah. A playoff team. You get to see C.J. Stroud in his sophomore year. You know, I mean, they got a lot of weapons. But what I look at is it's going to be interesting, you know, looking at that week two game, Pat, we talk about our our offense, and we're hoping it can be explosive. This new Shane Waldron offense with all these weapons and all these receivers and, and these tight ends. We added a running back, right? But you're going up against a, a revamped Houston Texans defense, right? They pick up Daniel Hunter from the Vikings in free agency. You know what I mean? Will Anderson was a defensive player of the year last year. So, you know, our biggest question mark on this offense, as it has been the last few years, is the offensive line. How does this offensive line match up with that front four of the Houston Texans and can Caleb Williams, you know, be able to uh, to handle that pressure? You know, what will D'Amico Ryans, who was a former defensive coordinator, now the head coach at Houston, what is he going to dial up and what is he going to do to take Caleb Williams off his game? But what is he going to do to to take these receivers out of the game and neutralize some of the weapons that the Bears have? So, you know, I'm real excited about that game, a Sunday night game. It's going to be showcased in the front of the world, Pat down in Houston, so I'm going to get me some good barbecue. Might go oh, down yeah. there and see Jay Prince. Jay Prince, hey, what's up? You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm excited shot. about that one, man. Don't, don't get shot, dog. No, <laughs> no, no, no. You, stay, you stay safe down there, man. We'll give me a chain like you got, Pat. CJ Prince can take me to hey, the man. Hey, man, listen. This ain't, this ain't, don't, don't let the chains fool you, but you know what I mean? This is, you, you, you in a different right. realm out here. You're going to get the J Prince chain. You're going to be coming back different, my guy. This is going to be the, 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 the glam show. You know what I mean? This is going to be the most blinged out show on a Chicago Bears show on the net. No, I'm I'm very excited for for uh, the schedule release. My initial thought was finally we get to see 
how the games fall, what order these games fall in, yeah. and what's going to be the most important games for the Chicago Bears. And I love, here's the one thing that I was worried about. Do you start your season off sitting there against all your toughest opponents and Caleb Williams have to, has to navigate through you know, some of the tougher teams that are on this schedule. I don't think that you, you're you sitting here saying that you're going up against the best of the best defenses in this first six weeks of the season. We'll pull the schedule back up here. I mean, listen, the Titans, the Titans defense, it's on a different turn now. I don't know if I'm as scared of it as I once was. I think week two versus... Uh, Houston, that's a week that I actually, I, I I said when I saw this, I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if the Bears go down there and win that. But that's a defense that can get after Caleb that is going to show some fight versus the Chicago Bears. But then when you get to like week three, week four, week five, week six, right? Like, yeah. are the Rams the same team? Aaron Donald's not there anymore. That makes a difference. That makes a big difference. Uh, when you get to weeks, week five and six, I, the Pan, I, I have no belief that the Panthers are good. They will have to go five and zero oh before I sit there and say, "Oh yeah, the Panthers might have a shot at something here." And then the Jaguars. I now I, I love the fact that we had Clay Harbor on earlier to talk about this Jaguars mm -hmm. game because it did change kind of my opinion on this. I think the Bears are in favor on paper here, but. It's going to be tough to beat them in a London element that they're very used to going to every single season. I think they're the team that usually has the disadvantage in that game. Or the, the, the away team is the team, even though it's a home game for the Bears, but the away team is the team that kind of has the disadvantage in that game because you, you've got a team that is... You know, like they're, they're not used to being in the London environment. They're not going to be there for two weeks. You talked about, right, how Shad Khan's throwing around the money. It's not the oh, yeah. same as how as how the McCaskies are throwing around the money. And so the Bears aren't going to have the same kind of length uh, 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 on that to go out to that game and get acclimated to being in London and different things like that. Correct. But I do believe your start to this season, if you can get, the Titans, the Colts, the Panthers, and the Jaguars and start off four and two. That, to me, is the best-case scenario for you, especially with the with the uh, Commanders and the Cardinals and Patriots coming up next because the teams that are supposed to be a little bit more sub, but I think it'll get more difficult there. Week 11 through week 18 actually scares me. Yeah, it's a gauntlet. It's a gauntlet. Week 11 through week 18. Welcome back to the black and freaking blue division, J-Man. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and you look at it right, leading going into the bye week, right? You you want to say what five and one? You want to say that, right? You want to say that. The fan in me has us five and one. Yes. Yeah, you want to say that, but but there's like I mean the Texans. That's a tough game. Yeah, and, and don't slouch on the Colts either. That's a tough. That's a tough task as well. You know what I'm saying? Anthony Richardson coming back off an of injury. Um, they just paid uh, with Michael Pittman Jr. Just got paid. Had a really good season last year. Yeah. A uh, defense that always shows up, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of of if they've added marquee pieces to a defense, that Colts defense always plays tough, especially at home. It's a tough place to play. Yeah, it's a short trip, but it's a tough place, a tough place to play. So, you know, you can't overlook that uh, that game as well. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, the Panthers, we handled them pretty well last year. I don't see how that team right improved. That. I mean, I'm not even – that's a W. I'm going to say the Titans is a W. So that's two right there. So – you know, really, Titans an easy dub for you. I'm gonna say yeah, at home. I tight. I'm not gonna say easy, but I think we're gonna win. I think we're gonna win the game. Okay. But I'm looking at okay. The fan wants to say five and one, but realistically, the the when looking at games and how they lay, I'm gonna say four and two. Yeah, no, I I, I agree with you, and and I think that to the bye. you you really you really point out you know it, it is a gauntlet, and and I think this is. The part that I love about this schedule is there's no hiding in this schedule. Yeah, you start off your season with some easier teams, but there's still some teams that can get after you. Listen, Arizona on paper is an easier team, but now Kyler Murray, outside of having uh, – um, uh, why is his tight end's name escape me right now? The young boy, rookie came in, absolutely set the world on fire last year, dominated. Outside of him, though, um, you're, you're sitting there now with – also, Marvin Harrison Jr., you also add more pieces to your uh, um, 
to your offensive line. You also, you know, like that's a better football team. I would not be surprised. I said this kind of earlier in the year. Trey McBride was the name I was looking for, by yeah, the way. Trey McBride. Uh, 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 I said this kind of earlier in the year um, after after the season ended with how Arizona's picks ended up landing. I was like, don't be surprised if Arizona is your worst to first team this season. Yeah. Easy. Don't be now that defense atrocious. I don't think that defense has a lot of answers on it. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I do think offensively they'll be able to put up some points. And Kyler Murray having Marvin Harrison Jr., Trey McBride, there's some weaponry there. You add to the offensive line, you're improving. They got uh, uh, Paris Johnson last season, who I think is an excellent tackle for them. I, I think that that could be a team that you have to worry about a little bit more this season, especially by the time you get to week nine. Yeah, you look at that, too. You look at it, it, NFL is all about matchups, right? You look at the matchups, right? You talk about Marvin Harrison. You talked about Trey McBride, you know, pieces that that Kyler Murray has at his disposal. Plus, you have a guy that's a weapon in himself, you know, it has the ability to extend plays and our lack of our lack of ability on defense getting to the quarterback. Right. We still yeah. there's still a question mark on that opposite side of Montez Sweat. Right. And we have a quarterback like Marvin, Her- uh, like Kyler Murray. You want to be able to one with your interior guys. You want to be able to dent the pocket, and then you know you want to be able to the, the edge guys got to contain him because if he breaks contain right, that's when those big plays happen because now that puts so much stress on the secondary to be able to cover guys like Trey McBride, who was a good tight end that can really stretch the middle of the field, can exploit matchups on a linebacker, and now you bring in a young rookie who's had you know generational receiver. Everybody wants to throw that stuff out there. I'm going to say a highly touted rookie because. That generational you know, you know, you know how I'm tired of hearing about that. that. Huh? I said, you know how I feel about that. Yeah, yeah I'm tired of hearing about that. Like we disagree on that one. I, I think we got a that's a that's a dog yeah. in the making on our hands. <laughs> is he generational? I I think that he is generational. I I do think he is generational. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope he is because you know, when I when I see the son of a former player, Marvin Harrison, Hall of Famer, like yeah. I, I played, you know, played against him. Played against him in college as well. Great players. Good to see that you know these NFL guys, their 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 sons are going off in NFL and having success. And you know Marvin Harrison's the next one in line. So it's gonna it's gonna be tough if we can't get pressure on Kyler Murray. Um, you know I I think and plus the travel right. And that's the thing when you when you're the travel when you're going on a long road trip. You know you're not used to your normal routine and stuff yeah. like that. It's, it's going to be interesting to see how this team responds. I know when we played the Cardinals uh, back in the day and, and we went on a long road trip, and we were terrible. Yes. And, and, and and that was the game. There's one game y'all was good. There's the one. Huh? I said, well, there's one game where y'all – well, y'all was good for the second half. I shouldn't say that y'all was good. That's what I'm saying. We were – offensively, we were terrible. I don't even think we gained the first down that first half. And, you know, the defense played lights out, played out of this world, and that's why we won that game. But – you know, I remember it was a travel, like, you know, you're yeah. playing earlier, like, you know what I'm saying? It, it was it was tough. And that's a tough place to play as well. So, you know, I'm not going to say you can't sit there and say that's a W. You know, that's a team that that didn't live up to expectations last year and guys are hungry. And like you said, Pat, that's a team that could go from worst to first because you have guys that didn't live up to expectations, you know, contracts and their futures are on the line. And, you know, they know this is a year. It's a prove it year for, for a lot of those guys you know, on that roster, especially Kyler Murray. So, you know, we'll see, uh, you know, how the Bears, you know, respond on that road trip. Yeah, and, and I think that's that's the part of it where the one thing I love about this schedule, especially for having a rookie QB, and, and you tell me if you kind of saw this as well, J-Mac, a lot of stretches of home games. Yeah, I think that that's going to be a benefit too. And we keep saying rookie QB, Caleb and Rome. A lot of stretches where you get that Bears fan support. And even some of those teams where you maybe don't get those stretches of home games. I've seen games in Houston. Bears fans travel really well. I've seen games in in Indianapolis. Bears fans travel really well to those games. I think that this schedule this season allows Caleb to kind of get acclimated to the NFL a little bit easier as far as having support on his side, as long as he plays well, uh, having support on his side because at, I would say almost every single one of the games outside of Seattle and maybe Washington, yeah, Bears fans show up really well to all these cities. San Francisco, you always see Bears fans in there. Detroit, always see Bears fans in there. Uh, uh, I, I guess New England I could throw in there as well. But, like, out, outside of those, right, like, 
you, I think that this is one where Caleb Williams kind of gets to, to start off his NFL career with the support of the city following him around strongly for most of the season. And, and I think that, I guess I should ask you, the, the player who's on the field, does that make things easier when you look up? And, and I, I remember watching that Arizona game where we come back and you would have swore it was that soldier watching it on TV. Yeah. But how many Bears fans were losing their mind in there? Yeah, it does make a huge difference being at home. Like I said, you used to your routine. You at home, uh, you know, you you got a good support system in terms of the crowd. You know, a lot, a lot of players, we feed off the crowd. And, you know, the crowd, regardless of what the record is, uh, you know, what the organization has been going through, like you said, Bears fans, they show up in support. They're always going to back their team. Yeah, they're going to give their opinion as they should, you know, good or bad, but they're going to support their team. So, you know, we have a stretch, like you said, weeks four through, well, weeks four and five back-to-back home games. And then you look at uh, weeks 10 through 12 you know, three home games in a row. And one thing I look at, Pat, you know, we're talking about Caleb Williams. I love it. I love it that we get the opportunity to see, you know, Caleb go up against Jaden Daniels, week yeah. in Washington. And then two weeks later, you know, uh, yeah, two weeks later, he gets the opportunity to go up against possibly Drake, Drake May. If, if he beats out Jacoby Brissett there in New England, you get, he gets to go up against Drake May. So now all of that quarterback, you know, talk leading, leading up to this draft, you know, Caleb's bona fide number one, but Jaden Daniels is close and Drake May could be the number one and all this stuff. Like they get the face off and really see, you know, who's that guy. And not saying that this is going to, you know, like obviously these guys got to develop. And I and I hope all these guys go on to have long careers, but it's good that we're going to see these guys face off their rookie year and to see, you know, what the future in terms of quarterback is going to look like in, in the NFL. Yeah, and listen, the, the the part that you love about it too, they're getting the spotlight Sunday night football early in the week. They're getting acclimated to that early. This is not going to be a surprise for Caleb Williams, uh, um, you know, that that he's going to be on on the biggest stage with the biggest cameras on him, everybody watching what he's doing. Uh, I, I believe it seems like the Bears are going to avoid hard knocks, which we didn't talk about earlier because we were engrossed in the conversation. But listen, I doubt it. I doubt it the McCaskey power for like a day. <laughs> and it was yesterday. It was legitimately yesterday. I doubted the McCaskey power for a day. And then literally the next day, it was like Giants get hard knocks. It was like, God, dog, bro. Like, I, I knew they weren't going to get on there though, man. Like, I, like it's just like, like I said on, you know, earlier on the pod when we had clay on here, um, you know, as media, we can barely, we barely get, access to practice i mean look look at training camp last year you know they put us in the stands we're way up in the corner we can't see nothing i got binoculars on you know to, and then i try to go over by the field and the guy the security guard is telling me hey no he was, good up in the stands. he was good with us until larry came over and then courtney came over and then they, bro, they made the, they, they made the spot too hot bro yeah it, it was crazy and i'm just like you know me i'm not gonna i'm gonna follow protocol and you know i get it but I'm like, man, like, dude, like, I've only practiced on this field like a thousand times. Like, I'm not gonna. I mean, what do you think I'm gonna do? Run on the field and you know, streak the field or something, man? No, like, bro, on. you, you in year two now. You in year two. You a part of Joniac's crew. You, you got to start walking this field how Joniac walked, bro. Yeah, you know I mean, this ain't, hey, 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 listen, hey, listen. This ain't this ain't undrafted Jason McKee no more. Well, you right, got to right. be on eggshells on that field. You the man now, baby. You can walk on yeah. that. Hey, what's going on, Coach Flu's Pleasure to see you again, man. How you feeling, baby? <laughs> Look, I think, man, like, no, get me wrong now. Johnny, you're the voice of the Bears, but you ain't a player for the Bears. So fair, yes. Fair, you're on the field. Super Bowl champ, fair, yes. But I, I should be able to stand next to Thayer. We didn't win the Super Bowl, but there's only two teams in Bears history that went to the Super Bowl. And Johnny didn't play on that team. He just called He just called it. Yeah, so how was yeah. he more credited than me? You know what I'm saying? Johnny, you know, he, he bought him out for Huh? You just you, you just got to walk out there with that confidence, bro. That's what we're doing next year. We're walking out there with confidence. See, this year we was kind of trying to figure it out. We was like, okay, where we need to be, right, okay, members I'm of the media, whatever it is. This year you got to be like, oh, man. Like, you got to be like telling a story as security walk right. up. Be like, I remember I hit Peanut right there. Oh, yeah. what's going on, baby? How you doing, man? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, it is what it is. I ain't going to, you know, I'm going to respect protocol, man. I'm going to represent. ESPN Chicago. Well, I'm not gonna stir up any commotion like that, but I'm gonna have to put T Med in the headlock on the way out because he you knows he's gonna. As much as I may want to do something, he's gonna he's gonna feel how mad I am. You know what I mean? I'm gonna have to put him in the headlock, or you know, 
You know what I love about T Man? T Man was the first person to that because I like I brought my bag out there and set it down. It was it was a little close, right? It was a little close. I shouldn't have had it where I had it. That's on me. And the first person to walk up to me was T Man. He said, "Come on, baby, you don't know the protocol. What's going on, baby? You uh, J Mac, J Mac, you got to teach him the protocol, baby." I said, "J Mac, like, I don't." He's like, "He's like, I ain't been on this field as a as a media member. I don't know the protocol yet." Yeah, I'm, I'm hey, trying to- I got my hey. I got, hey, you know, I'm new too. I got every credential they gave us. I got the badge. <laughs> I got the butt, the, the little thing, the little, uh, the gate card. You know, yeah. I got my binoculars. You know, I got my little notebook. Hey, you, you was know, out there, like, dog. I'm media now, man. Hey, I love it. I love it. Here's the, here's the, qu- the biggest question that everybody is going to be asking, Jay Mac. When you look at this schedule, mm-hmm. how many wins do you see, my friend? Yeah, let, let's go through it, man. Because let's go through it. Last year, so last year when I did this, and I'm going to actually tweet it out again, uh, the schedule. I, I went through my wins and losses. And I think last year I was like at like 10 and 7. Yeah. And people was going off of me. Ah, oh, you're you're a clown. You're a homer. You're this. I'm like, no, nah, I'm just a Bears fan. This is my opinion. You don't like it, unfollow me. I don't give a damn. So <laughs> it'll be the same thing this year. You know what I mean? Bears fans, you have your opinion. I have my opinion. So week one, I'm going to say W, Pat. What do you think? I I – I think week one is a dub. I, I don't believe in Will Levis. I believe in a lot of the stuff they have there. Um, but Will Levis is a I, – I don't even know what Will Levis is. I think that's the tough part. I, I don't know what he is. It, this the great unknown, and I don't know if he'll be ready versus this level of Bears DBs week one. I'm going dub. I got Bears 1-0 to start the season. Definitely. And then, you know, I'm going, I'm going here. I'm going back-to-back losses. I'm going lost to Houston Sunday night. Mm. And I'm going to loss to the Colts. I know, I know, two road games, but I just think that Texas, the Texas is tough, man. Texas think, defense is tough. Yeah, I mean, they they made the right moves to me in yeah. the off season. You know, you're going to get some guys back. Uh, who's the guy that got hurt? Was it Nico or it was Tank Dell? Right, Tank Dell. Tank Dell. You're going to get Tank Dell back, man. Like I just, you know, I, I, I they, they brought in um, who's the running back for for Cincinnati. Um, Oh yeah! Oh man, I forgot about that. Yeah, they, they brought, brought in um, Joe Mixon. They brought Joe in Joe Mixon. Mixon. Oh my you god! Still got Pierce, but you got a, a two-headed monster in which you hey, and you added Diggs. Yes, <laughs> and you got Stephon Diggs. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, dude, like, come on, like the Houston's and D'Amico Ryan's is like, look, we went to the playoffs last year, but this year it's, it's we're trying to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? With the moves they made, Daniel Hunter, you pay for him to come in. Will Anderson, defensive rookie of the year, man. Like, come on, man. Like, this is this is a team that yeah. that's primed to to go back to the playoffs, but really surpass that, you know. And and I just think it's going to be tough going down there at Houston Sunday Night Football, um, you know. Despite what we have, what we added, I just I don't know, man. Just, some's telling me Houston, and then I don't want to, you know. Indy's a tough p- place to play, you know. I think we have the better team on paper, but I just feel like it's a tough place to play. I feel like Indy's going to get that one. So what is that? One and two right there. One and two start to the season. Yeah, the Rams are going to beat. Carolina we're going to beat. And the Jaguars, I don't trust Trevor Lawrence. Like you said, they all talk about Justin Fields. We talked about Justin Fields. He can't do this. I swear he was the first pick in the draft. Right. What has Trevor Lawrence done? Nothing. So I'm looking at what is that, four and two? Uh, I don't I don't want this to come off as hate. I don't want this to come off as hate. But here's my here's my Trevor Lawrence rant that I have all the time. Everybody talks about Trevor Lawrence because of that second half of the season they had, and he was better. He was a better quarterback. But it's two years ago, that second half of the season, he goes into a playoff game. They end up coming back and winning the game. No one talks about the fact that he threw four interceptions. Yeah. No one talks about he's the reason that his team was in a bad situation. Nobody talks about that, which is fine. He won the game. Don't talk about it. What did we see last year? All the time. Trevor Lawrence being the reason that untimely interception, bad fumble, something yeah. that puts your team behind the eight ball. Why aren't we talking about that? No, nah, I know why we're not talking. It's Jacksonville. Nobody cares. That's why we're not talking about it. Like, let's be real. Like, Justin Fields was the 11th <laughs> quarterback taken, and they're going to focus on him, which rightfully so. Chicago, big oh, dig, yeah, big market. But it's Jacksonville. Nobody cares. And it's no disrespect to Jacksonville, but they're not talking about Trevor because – Nobody's tapping in on ESPN in the morning or on Fox or on whatever whatever uh, uh, big station that's out there that's doing sports talk Monday through Friday to check out the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
Uh, maybe I'm setting up beef with Jacksonville. Yeah, right now. I, I don't know say, if I am. I all, might be. All the Jaguars fans, his name is at Pat the Designer. On Pat Twitter. the Designer. No, shoot it my way. I, <laughs> hey, listen, I, I fully, I want somebody to come at me with Trevor Lawrence smoke. And goes it because see, this is the thing. This is the thing. They're gonna sit there and send me the overall numbers, and I'm gonna sit there and send them back the game by game numbers and be yeah. like, What are you doing this game? What are you doing this game? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I, I, I do this, I, I, I fight a little bit, but uh, that, that was uh, sorry, I lost myself there for a second. Uh, looking back at the schedule though, I'm gonna be honest with you, I will say because I think that there will be an importance placed on this game all the way at the top. This is the quarterback that Ryan Poles passed up. This is the QB the Bears could have had if they took the number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. This is the guy. CJ Stroud is the guy that could have been a Chicago Bear last year if you don't take the hall, if you take the quarterback. Right. He made a scenario that we thought was abysmal look pretty freaking good last year. Yeah. We 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 thought the Texans were, hey, listen, y'all finna get clapped. So I think that there is a there will be an importance placed on this game organizationally. I'm going to say the Bears tooth and nail Sunday night football, but fight their way to a win. I don't even know if it's going to be a great win, but I think the, the defense is going to understand the pressure that's placed on this, this game. I think that Caleb Williams is going to understand the pressure placed on this game. I am going to say Bears start off 2-0. and That Colts game is tough. Yeah, that's that's what, I'm what Anthony Richardson are we getting? Yeah, and it's you know I think he can. I think Anthony Richardson can play. I think he believes he's Cam Newton. Yeah, and there's only one guy that was able to sustain a lengthy career that way, and that's Cam Newton. That's tough to me. So you're saying? So what do you? So what is? What are you saying? Five and one. <sighs> No, 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 no. I'm not going five one because I, I'll say this: all the all the slander I just threw on Jacksonville. I think Jacksonville's in a better situation. I got the Bears starting off four and two up to the okay. bye. Um, okay. I have us beating Tennessee. I have us beating the Texans. Yeah. I have us beating the Colts. Lose to the Rams. Beat the Panthers. Lose to the Jaguars. Lose to the Rams. Okay. I I think that the Rams are still a little bit more. It's it's there's a there's there, there's some pedigree there. There's something that's already built there. And, and my biggest question with this Bears team this season, and it will remain my question until these questions are answered, and that won't happen until the season gets here. What flus are we getting? Yeah, I love that. All of a sudden, we're all in love with flus. I love that. I'm 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 I'm. Uh, he looks more confident. He's got a team that looks a lot more confident. I love all of that. But we can't sit here and pretend like we didn't leave this season questioning what Matt Eberflus did. Yeah, and I mean I, it's, it's I mean it's, it's so tough, right? To to it's it's you look at Flus this season, right? We start off terrible, terrible, bad football, yep. lack of execution, defense is non-existent, not getting pressure on the quarterback, turning the ball over, everything that you don't want the season to start off, uh, that you don't want to have starting off the season happen for the Bears, right? Losing the team, Justice not playing well. What the hell are we running on offense? You name it, put it in a buffet, and that's what the Bears displayed <laughs> the first half of the season, right? The Bears smorgas bad, shall we say? Yeah, the smorgas trash, whatever <laughs> you want to call it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Tampa Bay. I'm on the sideline. It's 120 degrees humidity. And I'm like, golly, I'm about to call Danny. Like, hey, Danny, man, can I can I just go up to the booth and watch the rest of the game? This is I'm gonna act like I'm on the sideline because this is trash. Terrible. Like, I'm on the You're moving Joniak out of the way. You're like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, Jeff. Uh, I, I was just talking with Coach like, Flute. What? Yeah, like, hey, Jeff, get another chair because it's hot out here, man. I ain't come. I, I can't watch no more of this trash. You know what I mean? But it's it's and then and then like you know, you, all of a sudden you go on a run in the middle of the season, like we saw, right? But then you have yeah. the hiccups, right? Lose a close game to Detroit, right? Who else did we lose a close one to? Uh, Denver, uh, you right? lost. You lost to Denver after that Tampa Bay game. You right. should have won that game. Some interesting calls, some bad right. timely turnovers. You lose the the Detroit game. You lose the the Cleveland game was a combination. Justin was bad in the Cleveland. Yeah, so yeah, three really games bad. right there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like okay, and, and, and you know what? And, and don't get me wrong. Like there were times I'm. I, I'm 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 get, I, I was on flu too. Like, damn, what is what's going on? Like, man, like, what's going on? You know what I mean? But I do respect him from a coaching standpoint, going through all that adversity and being able to 
galvanize the team, the team, being able to rally the troops, you know, keep the locker room together, keep the guys believing in what you're trying to do, stay the course, because it's hard as hell to go in there every single week, go into practice when you're losing close games to teams you shouldn't lose, you know, yeah. you're blowing 10 point leads or whatever to lose a game, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the fourth quarter. Like, that's hard to, to sit there and address the team and say, hey, guys, I know this isn't the result we wanted, but we got to go back to work. Like, guys are professional. Guys understand, like, you know, you can lose guys. And once you lose that locker room and guys start pointing fingers at each other, it's going to implode. And it didn't. So I give Flus credit, and I think that's what really saved his job because I think Poles said, you know what, here's a guy that he he was able to battle through adversity. And yeah. Poles talked about that during the presser in which when they said they was going to retain Flus, He said he liked the fact that went through adversity. You had coaching changes, stuff that, like, man, like – Stuff that it was crazy on the field, off the field, like it was like we can't talk about some of the stuff that happened. Yeah. Out there. That is yeah. it's wild. And you know, and then all and then Peanut things. Tillman had to rappel through a window, oh break God. the oh news God. to Matt Eberflus, and then Matt Eberflus broke down in tears. Man. There was sackcloth torn, ashes on his. Yeah, I had to call Peanut. And say, hey, man, man, I'm, like, I'm like Peanut. They 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 told me you like you rate. You know, you were the first one on the scene at Alice. Like. Were you going to speak to the team or was there something else I should know about? <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> I, just, I just love that it's like anything FBI happens. Anything oh, FBI happens. Peanut Pe- Tillman was involved. Man. What the? What is Peanut doing here? Peanut, hey, Peanut was like, man, J-Mac, I got my home playing Madden right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out oh, Peanut, man. man. Yeah. Shout out Peanut. He was great it, on the was- show. Let, go check out that episode if y'all haven't seen when he was on the podcast okay. with us. Okay. All right, so we're at the bye week, J-Mac. I, yeah. So at the bye week, I had a Bears 4-2. and two. Where'd you, Where do you have the Bears right now? I had them 4-2. and two. So I had them. Who had, yeah. had us beating the Titans? That is losing two in a row on the road to uh, Houston and uh, the Colts. I got us beating the brakes off the Rams, the Panthers, and we're going to beat Ooh. the two off the Jaguars. So, Jaguars fans, you got beef. It's at JMAC37. Holler at me and I holler back. <laughs> we do. We, we are going at the Jaguars. What is our beef with the Jaguars? I'm not going to lie to you. It's such a random beef that we have. <laughs> it's, oh, man. This it's, is- it's, the, it's the Trevor Lawrence stands I get. That's what gets it for me. And I want Trevor to be good. Man, look. We can't go. I'm not, not. You got to go at the Jack. Like, it's funny. Just like who should be mad as a Panthers fan. We they, we just skip past them. Well, that's a dub. And we didn't even explain why. <laughs> no explanation, hey, listen, no explanation I, needed. I'm going I'm to explain why. DJ Moore already talked about the Panthers game. He said, yeah, they coming here. I'm going to hope to have the game that I wanted to have last year. Mm. Yeah, y'all finna get 200 put on your head tops. <laughs> you know, I thought it was pretty cool, though, in the schedule release video at how you know, he had the phone. It was like, oh, a meeting. A meeting a with call. And he hung up the phone on. <laughs> a perk call and he hangs up the phone. <laughs> the old school phone, too. The, ne- the next tail chirp. Or whatever no, J Mac, they brought it back. What phone? That's the, that is the modern day Razor. Okay. And it's a touchscreen phone, and you can fold that mug down. They didn't brought it back, dog. Hey, I, I ain't going to lie. I'm an iPhone guy. Yeah. But I might need that one if I need to make some Sam Heard deals. You know what I'm talking about. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Uh, I got two phones, one for the plug and one for the low. Matter of fact, let me make sure I don't have Sam Heard number in my phone. I don't know him. Is, is, is he out? Does he have a number? Does he? Have... I don't know. I didn't know him. I don't know him. I'm not affiliated with him. <laughs> peanut, peanut, leave me alone, Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> leave me alone, Peanut. Is crazy. Is Sam Hurd out? Is he still locked up? Oh man, I don't know. I ain't heard about Sam Hurd in a minute. That was a <laughs> that man, was a time, dog. Only, hey, it only would happen. This stuff only happens to the Bears. I tell Bro, you, bro. Hey, that, that's when Peanut knew, man. When he wanted to be in the FBI, <laughs> that's when he found out. Uh so four and two, both of us four and two. All right, yep. so let's break this down. Let's say up to week 10 now, because I think week 11 is where stuff really hits the fan. Yeah. Up to week 10, what is your feeling? You got Washington, you got the Cardinals, you got the Patriots. 10 weeks into the season, where do you have the Bears? So I'm going to say, so I think we'll beat Washington. We beat them last year up there up there in Washington. You remember Justin had his best game. DJ oh, yeah. Moore really exploded on the scene. He's going back to, you know, he played at the University of Maryland. Last year he had a ton of people come in town for the game. He really showed out. 
Uh, they've got a rookie quarterback. They're still trying to find their way. New head coach as well. So I like the Bears winning that one. Uh, Arizona is going to be tough. You know, I'm going to say that's going to be a loss just because it's the unknown. We talked about it, it's the unknown, and I think we're going to beat the Patriots. So, what is that? Six and where am I at? Six and two. Am yeah, I right would have you at six and three right now. Six, six and three, three to start, start the season up to week ten, uh, because we do have a bye week in there as well. I'm not mad at that. Yeah. I'm not mad at that. Like I, I, I really believe that the. I kind of agree with your assessment of that. I don't think the. I think the Patriots are going to be a team that. I, I feel bad to say it, but I don't think things are going to go well for them. This no, I wasn't really so. I was, you know, for me and and. I'm not necessarily I, – I, I didn't get a chance to watch a lot of Drake May. And right. you know, I know people who they like, oh, well, same school as Mitch and stuff like that. And that's not, that's not a fair assessment. That's just, you know, just terrible analysis if you compared him to Mitch because of the school. Yeah. So I don't know what Drake May is going to be. But I do know is uh, Gerard Mayo said that there's going to be a quarterback competition. And, and Jacoby Brissett is a really good backup. And he's played well when he's had the opportunity to start. So – you know, I think Jacoby Brissett is the consummate pro. So I think Drake May going into that situation gets the opportunity. Yes, he's going to battle with a veteran, but I think Jacoby Brissett is more of a stand-up guy who's going to help mentor him as well. Even though he may he's battling with this guy, he's going to you know do his part to to be that veteran that that Drake May can look up to. Um, I just feel like it's you know the, the new year, new head coach, new way of doing things. You know, Bill Belichick is not there. Um, so I I think it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how that thing pans out. I think it's going to be more of a rebuild year for the Patriots, but I like the bears in that one. And it's a home game too. I mean, my, my only, I I hope Gerard gets the, the, I, I hate to say this. I hate to say this. Hiring Gerard Mayo felt like when the Texans hired Lovey. Yeah. We need somebody to be here for a year. We have to have a head coach. I hope that he overperforms. I hope that he outshines every expectation that's placed upon him, but I don't think that he has been given the team to do that. I don't think that this Patriots team has taken steps in the right direction. I love the fact that you went out and got Drake May, but who's protecting Drake May? Yeah. But but this I, is the though. same the same questions we had about Justin Fields last year. That's how I'm looking at like Who's your who's your star wide out that he's throwing to? Who's your elite? Yeah, you know I mean, like, where's the positional players that is Drake May supposed to make these guys that, or are they already there? I I don't feel like he's been given the best situation to start off his head coaching career in. But I think when you look at the situation that Gerard Mayo's in, right, you have a guy who's played for an organization, a guy who was a high uh, draft pick for the organization, yeah. a guy who had success in the organization, stayed in the organization to coach and learn from one of the goats and Bill Belichick, right? So if anybody understands the Patriot way and what things are supposed to look like and how things are supposed to be done and what a winning culture is, it's Gerard Mayo. So I, agree with that. You know, I think when you have a, a, a lack of talent, right, you, you, you got to be able to develop players. You got to have them understand what it means to be a New England Patriot. It's championships. It's excellence. It's the Patriot way. Everything is geared toward winning. You know, nobody's off limits. There's no stars. Even when Tom Brady was there, he wasn't a star. You know, you heard Clay Harbor. We had him on our pod earlier saying that he was sitting in the front row taking notes in an offensive system that he had been in for years. Yeah. So it's not like Gerard Mayo was a part of that as well. So when you're bringing in young guys in the organization, right, and they know they these young guys have seen the championships that New England has won, you know, they they and they've got to understand the Patriot way and what better way than to embed that culture, that standard, that expectation into those guys and having a guy who went through it. And now you have a guy, right, who can relate to the young players as well because he was a player not too long ago and he was a high draft pick. So he understands the expectations that a lot of these young players have when they get drafted high, when they get drafted to come in and turn the tides of an organization. You know, what better head coach to have than Gerard Mayo? So I think it's going to be a rebuild, but I do think that, you know, it's not going to be like Lovey, a, a one-year wonder. That's, and that's that's all I that's all I don't want to see. You know, yeah. let him get the chance to put his system in place. I'm not saying you got to give him ten years yeah. to make it happen, but like realistically, I mean, what what about three years usually for a coach to kind of get everything the way that he wants it to be and his system in place and all that. I I just hope that he's afforded that amount of time. Um, but the fact that I mean, you I I would agree with you coming out of week ten. 
I would probably have the Bears sitting six and two. And I see this is the part where it's tough because in my mind, I'm like, okay, I had the Bears <laughs> 10 and seven. Right. I still have the Bears 10 and seven. In my heart, I'm picking these games as a Bears fan. In my mind, I'm picking these games logically. I have the Bears 10 and seven. I got them at six wins already. If we go seven, what would that be? Week 11 to week 18? I thought we were six. I thought we were six and three. Am I wrong? I thought six and three. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said that the wrong way. Six and three. I got the Bears eleven. I got the Bears six and three at week eleven right now. All right. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. All right. And Bears fans are gonna get mad at me, and I'm sorry, and I hate doing this because you know I hate that team up north. But until we beat them, I'm not giving us a W. So until we actually beat them, I'm not gonna project we're gonna split with them because we got swept last year. So I'm going. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I. This this is what it is. I mean, it's what it is. You know, I, that's a that's a loss in my. Let opinion. me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. There's two teams on the schedule, and the, and the Packers being brought up with that is very interesting because I do think that the belief around Bears fans that Jordan Love is a real. I think Jordan Love is real. I, th- I think he can play. I think that he continue. I don't know if he's Aaron Rodgers, but I do think that he continues the quarterback legacy there of good quarterback play in Green Bay. Yeah, I just think is there maybe, any is there any thought in your mind that maybe you see a step back from Green Bay and or Houston where all the hype was around you, no nobody believed in you, you overplayed it, but now people expect this from you and so now they know how to play you. I think, you know, I'm not going to say he's going to take a step back because you when you look at that offense, right? That team up north we saw a collection of young receivers, right? A lot of no-name guys getting opportunities and really made the most of it when they went out there, right? Every single week, it was a different guy leading that team in receptions, right? Leading yeah. leading that team in catches, right? And now, you know, you, you lose Aaron Jones, but you bring in a Josh Jacobs. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you drafted uh, Marshawn Lloyd from USC as well. So, you, you know, you, you still got your running game intact. And I just think that the way that offense is set up, right, they do a lot of things that we wanted the Bears to do with Justin Fields last year, right? They move the pocket. They play the Jordan uh, Love strengths, right? He's got a, lot, a live arm, right? But they do a good job of, mar- of, of of their run game marrying their passing game. And what I mean by that is, you know, they'll pull up and run play action out of the same formations that they have success running the ball in, which puts a lot of stress on the defense because everything looks the same, right? And all of a sudden you see a pulling guard, you think it's power, and guess what? He pulls that ball out of that running back stomach and he goes deep. You know what I'm saying? So I just think the way that the way that that team up north has done a great job year after year of developing players. Right. Having a system geared toward th- their players strengths. And they and they've sh- demonstrated that year after year. And that's why they've been successful. And that's why us as Bears fans can you continue to hate him even more because you have a, you know, a small market team that just they just do a great job of bringing in players no matter where they were drafted and developing them. And that's why they have success. Next next man up, that organization is, you know, pretty much the epitome of next man up. And I'm not just talking about the quarterback position. Look at the receivers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look at look at the guys on defense. You know, how many times have we seen, oh, they lost this guy in the secondary. Bam, another guy steps in, all of a sudden he's a playmaker. So, you know, it's just tough, man. I, yes, we got better. But the guy, they got better, and then the guys that will be in that system, I'm talking about those young receivers I talked about before, this will be their second year in that system. Yeah. This will be Jordan Love another year under his belt as a full-time starter. Christian so Watson, got, third year, right? Yeah. Third year, Christian Watson. Watson. I mean, you got – so it's it's going to be tough, man, and, and we haven't been able to do it. Um, and we've had all the hoopla coming into the season. We had all that last year, and we got our ass kicked. So I just – so when it comes to that team up north, I'm going to say we're not going to beat them this year again. Sorry, sorry, Bears fan. It makes me mad, but I just I can't do it until and you know I want to be proven wrong. Yeah, I want to be proven wrong. I, I hear you on that. Okay, so so you've got us taking an L versus Green Bay. Yeah. Um, week eleven at home. Week yeah. twelve versus the Vikings. What are your thoughts? I think we'll win that one because I think we're actually going to split that series. I think we'll win at home. Um, and you know, up in Minnesota. Uh, that's a Monday night game, actually. I think we, we made Monday night football game, yeah. But there, but there's another opportunity, Pat, in which you've got another young quarterback from right here. In the is it? Is it going to be JJ? Is it? You think it's going to be Sam Darnold? 
I'm gonna be honest with you, and and maybe this is just me being way too optimistic about how good Justin Jefferson is. I think he's one of those receivers that like a DJ Moore, where you see a quarterback have a better season than you've ever seen him have, and you're like, he shouldn't be good. But he's <laughs> throwing the football to Justin Jefferson. I, I I look at the I look at their weapons, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, uh uh um it's not a uh, uh, TJ Hawkinson. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, he's got weapons everywhere. If if he can just be competent, I would think the Vikings hope is that JJ McCarthy is not playing this season. He's going to play. You think he's playing? You yeah. think he's out there? We what, you think he's out there right away? What what number pick was he? JJ went 11th. He's playing. What is, what is they, Sam they said Justin what in the is, beginning. They, that's Justin. He, he said they just they said Justin in the beginning. What has Sam Darnold done? Nothing. Oh, I'm not I'm not sitting here telling you Sam Darnold's elite at all. I just I'm just saying I think that with JJ, there's a lot of stuff that like because he basically was the handoff the football and get the heck out of the way quarterback in college, I would think that they want him to learn starting off in the NFL. But you look at it, okay, when you talk about offenses, right, that Michigan offense was, you know, an old pro school style. pro style. It was kind yeah. of like the offense that we ran when I was with the Bears, right? Heavy run game. The run game sets up play action. You take your deep shots down the field. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say he's a game manager, but, you know what I mean, they're not going to put him in harm's way in terms of having him, you know, just have to rely on his arm to beat a team. And, you know, Harbaugh is, you know, he, he was coach. He's developed by one of the you know one of the one of the greats a coach has had success at every level he's been on and i think you know he he didn't necessarily have to be called on to win a game because they had such a great team around him same oh, thing cool. here in minnesota you got you got great talent you got great receivers and i just feel like when you have a guy who has a lot of talent i just think his ceiling is way higher than sam Darnold's. we sam Darnold, and i mean he was a high pick too but he's shown that he's not a starter and that's why he's bounced around and I think by the time that 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 camp ends, you know, I think they'll be calling for JJ McCarthy, or I think, or I think they will announce that JJ McCarthy is a starter. I just, I just don't see Tam, Sam Darnold beating him. We'll see. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that you're wrong either, but I just, I think the hope around JJ is that I, it's almost a a Mike Glennon situation, and I don't think Sam Darnold's as bad as Mike Glennon. Yeah. Right now, no, we brought in Mike. We was just like, just don't suck bad enough that we can let this kid sit. <laughs> Just don't do that. And then in four games, he did it. Like, it was like, oh, geez, we got to play him now. We got no yeah. choice. <laughs> You're so bad, bro. Um, so you've got us right now. That would put us at, we were six and three, six and four, seven and four. Mm -hmm. I would agree with you on that as well. I think that, um, you know what? Actually, I'm going to flip it. I think we do beat the Packers this season. So we win. We win that game at home. And I we, think we beat Green Bay at home. I think we lose to the Vikings, uh, uh, week at twelve home. at home, um, which is a tough loss to me. But here's the part that I think is the sunshine and rainbows part. You've got us getting swept by the Packers. I've got us sweeping the Lions. I think yeah. that we beat the Lions week thirteen. I think that we just have their number. Um, and so right now that would put the Bears at eight and four in my book as they head out to San Francisco. Uh, the, the Lions are just a team that what killed them last season, I think is still going to kill them this season. Quarterbacks that can be mobile, that can operate while throwing the football, while yeah. moving around, by, while being able to move around the pocket, being able to get outside. I think Caleb Williams still has a lot of those skill sets. I think he cooks the Lions this year just like, just like Justin Fields did last season for – realistically two games he only got to throw one pass in that second quarter and if Ty or in that uh, second half and if Tyler Scott keeps running he wins the game um I think that I I, I would almost say I kind of expect the Lions to like take a little bit of a step back here this season not to say they're not good but they've never been in that like NFC championship Super Bowl almost territory I think they may be a team that's reading the news clippings a little bit. Yeah, I tell you what, they're, they've been spending some money. I mean, I'm around, I'm in Ross St. Brown got paid, oh, yeah. and they Sewell got paid. You know, it's it's crazy. They're shelling out some money, but I, I think I think we're gonna split Detroit. You know, I still mm -hmm. think that, like I said, there, there's 
when you have success, right, and you look at a Detroit team that was on the brink of, of beating the 49ers, you know what I'm saying? So you, you're hungry. So now they have motivation in the offseason. They have something that's going to, you know, fuel that fire, so to speak. You know, they didn't finish the way they left off. And and we was a team the same way. I remember back in 05, you know, we, we lost to the Panthers, which we should have, and that really fueled the offseason. And then the next season went to the Super Bowl. So I look at it like that. You got a coach in Dan Campbell, I think, who's, not going to let this team take a step back. You got a lot of former players on that staff. Hank Fraley, Hank Fraley, who, who was the center for the Philadelphia Eagles, he is the O-line coach. Aaron Glenn is the defensive coordinator. You know, a lot of players that understand what it takes to be successful in this league because they, they were successful as players and they worked their, their way up the coaching ranks to be successful in NFL coaches. So I, I don't see them taking a step back. You know, I think Jared Goff's going to – he got paid well and, you know, he – you know, you got paid. You got paid a lot. You got paid. Again, we yeah. back up the Brinks truck, and and you know, hey, I'm all about these guys getting their money. J um, Mac, what were these fullback? What was this fullback money back in the day, man? What was, what was this? Yeah, I mean, like, man, hey, look, look here, man. We're gonna give you this contract. We're also gonna give you a a year subscription of Winter Fresh, some Juju Beans. <laughs> you know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get you a marketing deal with Icy Hot. They was giving you incentives, dog. They you, they hey, was- look. We're gonna give we're gonna give you a signing bonus, but part of your signing bonus is we're gonna give you a new neck roll every game, okay? That a was, new that neck was, roll. <laughs> <laughs> Big neck roll guy, were you? <laughs> no, I had to be. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, and then they gave me a new one every like, game. Out, out there looking like Mike Allstott. Like <laughs> <laughs> the Mike, Mike Allstott. Allstott made it popular, man. Muzz yeah. was out here killing Muzz with the neck roll, bro. I'm telling you, no, but I think I, I just I just man. That's a good team, man. That's a good yeah. team. And I mean, the running game, David Montgomery. Um, oh, yeah. You know, you've got uh, what's his name? My guy from last year was I was a huge fan of him. The other running back they drafted from oh, um, I can't think of his name. Had a really good rookie year. They know who we're talking about, Pat. I, I don't I can't recall his name, but it's because it's late, bro. Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs. Yes. Yeah, solid. solid. Get like yeah, it's like <laughs> you get no, J Mac. Yeah. Hey, 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 listen, we we get no. I walked into Menards today fully expecting to buy something. Forgot what I went in there for. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It is what it is. You got to live the life you live in. Uh, so right now I have the Bears eight and four. I believe you would basically how you just said it have the Bears eight and five as well, right? Sure. I think I think I'm eight and five. Yeah. You're at eight and five right now, which is tough because for me. I have the Bears as a 10-win team. Mm -hmm. And that means that we lose a lot of games over this next stretch of games. I'm looking, too. I'm like, man. like. (laughs) (laughs) Because here's the thing. With my heart, can I see 12 wins on this schedule? For sure. Do I think 12 wins is going to happen? I don't. I think that we – I I got us beating the Vikings there. I think we beat the Lions. I -hmm. think we lose the next two to San Francisco. And and Minnesota that puts us at eight and seven. Mm-hmm. I think that we beat the Lions week sixteen. That puts us at nine and or and it puts us at eight and six. I should say. I think mm-hmm. we beat the Lions week sixteen. That's that puts nine. us at nine and six. Yeah. I'm gonna say uh, we lose to the Seahawks. That puts us at nine and seven. And then give me a dub versus the Packers to finish off the season ten and seven. Yeah, I can see that. I mean that that's that's what I had them last year. Our schedule last year, but I'm gonna go like this, right? So. So I'm going back to week 11. I said we're going to lose to the Packers, right? Mm-hmm. We'll beat the Vikings. Um, at Detroit, I think we will lose at Detroit. I'm going to go on a limb and say we beat the 49ers. Uh, I think we're going to lose against Minnesota at Minnesota. Um, we will – what's that, the Lions? We will, we will beat the Lions. We'll beat the Seahawks and lose to Green Bay. So where am I at? If I'm not mistaken, I think you got us 11 and 6, my guy. Yeah, I think yeah. 11, I want to say you have us 11 and 6 right there. Let me let me double check now cuz at week 10 you had us 6 and 3, mm-hmm. uh 6 and 4, 7 and 5 or 6 and 5. Oh no, 7 and 5. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh hold on. Let me do this again. This, see this the this is the part of the show when you start counting stuff out where you got to right. figure it out, right? And so you had us 6 and 3, mm-hmm. 6 and 4. Seven and four. You got us beating the Lions or losing to the Lions here? I have us beating. You're talking about in week 13? Week going 13. Beat, yep, so we're going to lose to the Lions on the road. Lose to the Lions. Okay, seven and five. Yep. We beat San Francisco, eight and five. We 
beat the Vikings or lose to the Vikings? We're gonna lose. So we're gonna beat the the Vikings week twelve at home. We're gonna lose to the Vikings week fifteen. Eight and six. You got yeah. us at home versus the Lions. We beat the Lions there. Yep, we beat the Lions there. Nine and six. You got us beating the Seahawks ten and six. Yep, and we're gonna lose. And then you got us game. losing to the Pack to finish the season. So that's ten and seven. 10 and so you seven. still got us at ten and seven. And was here's the here's what makes this tough. And this is what's so big about all of these final games, right? So basically, you have a splitting with the Lions. We split with the Vikings. We get swept by the Packers. And here's another thing. Too. I don't know if you make the playoffs with that. And here's the thing too, right? Which 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 you know, my ten and seven is very questionable because the way I picked it, you know, with us being a home game and us being the home team in London as well, that means we go undefeated at home. That I don't think that's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not going to happen. Yeah, that's true. It could. I mean, like, that. that, that that's tough, too, because like uh, Clay said earlier, it's not really a home game for us. Yeah, so to, to, make my, to make my 10 and 7 look more realistic, like, I could even flop the Lions. You know, I could have the Lions beating us at home and then us beating them up in Detroit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? To make it more realistic because, I mean – I don't know. We'd, I'd have to ask Doug Coletti, who's our stat guy at ESPN, you know, when's the last time the Bears went undefeated at home? I don't know. You know, I'd have to find find out when that was, but I don't see that happening um, this year either. Does does three and three get us? Because I believe that's what you have. You no, know, you have us two and four in the division. Yeah. We beat the Lions. We beat the Vikings. We lose to them once, and we get swept by the Packers. Is that – do they get – a playoff berth with that, or are you not expecting a playoff season from the Bears this year? Yeah, I mean, it's it's possible, right? And we talk about it every That's year. Before your division is tough. Yeah, it's real tough. I mean, and then you're fighting for a wild card with a lot of good teams in the NFC that's going to have good records. And you know, it's you know, it's tough. You know, with all, I want to I want to buy the hype. I want to you know I want to ride the Caleb Williams train, but yeah. it's you look at the way the schedule's set up. And some, like we said, some of these teams are going to take the next step. You know, we don't know what Arizona is going to be. We don't know what the Colts are going to be. Hell, we don't even know what the Texans are going to be in their <laughs> second year. <laughs> C.J. Stroud's yeah. sophomore season. But, you know, you win the division. I just don't think that, you know, I, that that's that's the that's the bona fide key is winning the NFC North. But I just feel like, hey, that team up north has had our number. And, you know, styles make fights. And, you know, matchups make NFL games. And, and and they've had the matchups, but they've also had the ingredients. They've had the coaching, which is going to play a huge part in it. And they've they've found ways to beat us over and over again. And we have not get, gotten over the hump, regardless of who we brought in free agency, what we've done. We have not go got over that hump. We haven't been close to winning on our division. So if we want to make the playoffs, the key is through the division. And I just don't think that, despite all the moves we made, you know, I don't think we have. I don't think we can do it. You know, I hope we do. And, yeah. I hope we can. And, that's, and that's what that's what makes it interesting. Like I do think I think how the Packers have our number, we have the Lions number. Yeah. Now the Lions got the win last year, but to me it's because of just the total coaching collapse in the last two minutes. Like I, <laughs> when you when you said I'm sitting here on the sideline looking at Montez Sweat and, and Tremaine Evans going, what the heck? What are y'all doing here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I, I think just a complete now. Yeah. With that being said, could a coaching collapse happen this season? A hundred percent. Could you have those same issues this year? One hundred percent. You've got Matt Eberflus back. And that's a concern that I have. That he is going to still have some of those coaching issues that we saw show their ugly face last season. But I do think that we have the Lions' number this season. I think that Flus is going to place more of an emphasis on finish these games out. Mm -hmm. I got us. I got a sweeping the Lions. I got a splitting with the Vikings. I got a splitting with the Packers. That would put us four and two in the division. I think that's enough to get you in the playoffs, but you got to handle business elsewhere. And yeah. I'll say this. If the Bears get off to a slow start this season, playoffs are out the window, in my opinion. Definitely. If, if you get off to a, right, we we did, what did we say, four and two? If you get off to a two and four start to start the season with this second half of the season that you have post bye week. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I'm, I'm just, at that point, I'm saying, all right, let's watch guys develop. Let's see who gets where. Let's see who figures what out. Because I just, I don't think that, while I get it, third easiest schedule in the NFL, this is why I wanted to see how it lays out. Because, yeah, I see some easy games in the beginning. But then I see eight weeks of absolute, you better bring your A game or you're going to be getting slept. Yeah, it's going to be a gauntlet. And and a lot of things, too, you know, things that you can't factor in is health. 
and not just for the Bears, you know, knock on wood. We want our guys to stay healthy. Absolutely. Um, other teams, you know, run into health issues, but that's why the depth is so important, right? And we talk about this offensive line. We talk about the defensive line, right? Depth, depth, depth. You know what I mean? Who's behind um, Braxton Jones? You know, it's Kieran Amagaji who they drafted in the third round. He's not going to be available to even practice till training camp, right? right? So you got Larry Borum who's behind him. You know what I mean? Like that's, you know what I mean? That, that's been an issue with the Bears. Despite weapons and all that stuff, the offensive line has been an issue because of the lack of depth, right? I mean, you got Ryan Bates who's going to start at, possibly start at center this year, but how many games did he start last year? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that in defensive line, right? If opposite Montez Sweat, who do we have? Demarcus Walker, but who's the, behind, behind Demarcus Walker, right? The guy's jersey that you got, Demar, uh, Dominique Robinson. Yeah. The guy's jersey you just bought, Pat. Dominique <laughs> Robinson. You just bought his jersey. <laughs> I bought I bought a Dominique Robinson jersey. <laughs> he had half a sack. And don't get me wrong, like I I I listen, I'm gonna tell you right I, now. I, hope, I mean uh, I mean I, I hope go. I hope he develops. I hope he develops. I don't know. He, he, nah, it's but like, Austin Booker was brought in, you know, you, you got a young guy like Austin Booker, but you know, that's let, let it go. Is, I, I want Austin Booker to come in opposite Montez Sweat, somehow win that job and have a season like a former teammate of mine, his rookie year, Mark Anderson. You know what I mean? That would be yeah. awesome. That would be fantastic. That would be what we would need. You know what I'm saying? That that would be what the Bears would need on that defense to really, you know, solidify a defense in which you can say, hey, the only hole that they have is that other spot opposite Montez Sweat. You got elite players at linebacker. You know, if you got a young secondary, you got an elite corner that you just paid. You've got two up and coming uh, rookies on opposite Jalen Johnson, and you've got two guys who invested high draft picks, uh, high draft picks in, in Kyler Gordon, you know, and Jaquan Brisker, guys who played a lot of ball here already, who's going to get better. Um, so, you know, the defensive line, that other end spot opposite Montez Sweat is, is right now, you know, the biggest question mark. And, you know, you hope Austin Booker is a guy who you were high on, Pat. Yeah. You hear a mock draft, you had the Bears taking him, and they end up taking him, who's got, you know, a lot of things that you like. But he's another guy that didn't start a lot of games in Kansas. But when he got in, he was productive. So let's hope he can be productive, you know, in, in if he earns a starting role as a starter. I, and I think there's the, – I think the, the offseason is not over. You know what I mean? There There is – I would say keep an eye out on re-signing in Ikengakwe if that's an option there. It, 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 a lot of people are looking at the season he had last year and saying, you know, he had a down season and and that, you know, why would we want him back? Well, because he was the main guy where his best years have come as being the other guy. Correct. Guess what? In this offense, he's the other guy. Yeah, he's the yeah, other I guy. Yeah, I mean, like, like, listen, Montez Sweat's the guy. He's the other guy, and so – it's a broken bone. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, ligament damage. Okay. If, if it was a torn ACL, if it was a torn Achilles, if it I'd be a little more like, All right, bro, like I, I don't know about re-signing them, but it, it's a, it was a broken ankle, I believe. Right. Like, so yeah, yeah. broken ankle. So I know he, uh, it's, it's, it's bone. I'm, I'm good with bone injuries. Put the bones back together. Those can get put back together. <laughs> yeah. It'd be interesting to see. They got a, you know, it's, you know, phrase is out there. I don't, I got to, do my research on who's out there, so I'm not going to go out and, and act like I know who's Lee out there. Emmanuel Agba still out there as well. Yeah, but you know the Bears, is the the dollars got to make sense in order for it to to work. And oh, absolutely. So yeah, we'll see, man. I think it's going to be an interesting season. I think the Bears fans are going to be treated to a lot of great games, and of course, our schedule. Hope we hope we're right. I hope they end up ten and seven, and me and Pat's right. But oh, no, listen, listen. I hope we're wrong. Well, give me seventeen and zero, baby. Right, 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 right. We, I just want them to make the playoffs, which would be awesome. You know, I just want, I just want our guys that we drafted. I want Caleb Williams to be that guy. You know, I want all, all good vibes for the Bears, man. All good yeah. vibes, man. We'll see. We'll see what these boys can do. Uh, I, I'm excited for this season. I'm glad that we finally have the schedule because now you kind of can talk about it. And okay, if there's this, how do these guys match up after this week? How do you prepare heading into this week? You, now, now we got a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of conversation that we can have on these boys, but I, I love everything that we're seeing from this, uh, from how this Bears team has been built. Now it's getting to the time to take it off of paper and put it on the field, and that's the important part. And I want y'all to know, I used to be just as excited as y'all about all these videos that come out about Caleb 
and and he's throwing the football to his receivers and look how it's coming off the hands. I used to be excited about rookie minicamp and J Mac ruined me. J Mac and Lance and the one conversation I've had with Olin and <laughs> like they have ruined me about my excitement of these moments of guys in t-shirts and shorts. <laughs> Hey, I'm I'm always with the Bears. I'm overly optimistic, but at the same time, like, man, come on. Like, the funny thing is, right, so I'm down in Orlando this weekend, so I didn't have a chance to go to rookie mini camp. I would have loved to so I can get a glimpse of Caleb Williams. And, uh, you know, but here's the thing that I'm not going to do. I'm not going to sit here and, and, you know, seeing guys tweet out videos and, oh, Caleb Williams, look at it. He's, man, he's. No drop passes. Oh, he's on the mark. Look at his form. He's on fire. I'm like, guys, it's routes on air. It's a part of the warm up. He should be 100%. There's no pass rush. There's no secondary guys. Like, come on, man. Like, what are we doing here? Like, what are we doing? Now, now, here's, here's my only pushback on that, J-Mac. And this is still me being the, the Bear fan that's never been on the field. We've seen the dudes that missed them throws. <laughs> We, we've seen the dudes that in the practice session are throwing it too far, throwing it too short, right. not hitting the receiver. I'm going to be excited about the good. I heard that it was about 15 minutes of Caleb Williams hitting the same spot in a row. I'm going to be excited about that a little bit. I'm not saying I'm going to say that that's going to change our season because a pass rush changes a lot. Me and you sat there last year. And, and it was funny because, the first off, the social media team, will never put out a bad video. I need y'all to understand this. Yeah, they the, the Bears social media team will never put out a video of a guy absolutely lacing a pick in there to Jalen Johnson, and he's sitting there taking it to the house. Now, they're going to show Jalen Johnson taking it to the house, but they're right. not going to show what happened to do that. But I remember last season, and it's not a slight to Justin, but there was a play that got put out on social media. Him to DJ Moore. Threw a beautiful pass, landed right in DJ Moore arms. Touchdown. People mm -hmm. losing their mind. What a dot. Oh, my God. What and did that I tell play, you about that play? That, that play, me and J-Mac were sitting there counting the amount of sacks that Justin would have taken on that play. And basically that the throw never would have gotten off. Now, would he have gotten sacked? He probably would have got out the pocket, made something happen, whatever mm -hmm. it is. But we literally were sitting there just going sack, sack. Yeah. Sack. Yeah. Now he let it go. <laughs> and you had you had individuals. Just, just take it all with a grain of salt. Yeah, you know I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's. So it, it's. I mean they got to get out there. They got to get their work in. It's good that you know he's. You I know, love he, that we're building the chemistry early. Right, I love right. that. And and he's getting a feel for the receivers. I say that's the biggest thing, right? The guys are out there in shorts. You know, he's throwing to DJ Moore. He's throwing to Keenan, Tyler Scott, Bayless. Yeah. You know, guys who have you know. You've been here. You bring in Keenan, the new guy. Keenan's a new guy just like Caleb. So he's trying to get a feel for the organization. You know, he's trying – Caleb's got to build up chemistry with all the receivers. And, you know, every receiver runs – just because they're running slant routes or posts or whatever they're running in the video that a lot of people was talking about, um, you know, every receiver runs it differently. Yeah. So he's got to get a feel for, okay, you know, he, you know, he's been touted because he's a quarterback that has accuracy but also can throw in anticipation. So – you know, this slant route or this post route by DJ Moore, you know, I've got to throw it quicker because when he comes out, when he plants his foot on a slant route on that third step, he comes out with the burst, whereas Keenan Allen is more smooth on that third step. He comes out and he's more he, – he has more of a tempo burst as mm -hmm. opposed to just a burst like DJ Moore. So those are all the nuances of route running, and those are all the things that Caleb's are getting a feel for. And the same thing with his receivers, right? DJ Moore was in a different offense last year, so – Shane Waldron, when when he wants his receivers on his slant routes, he may want he may want may want all uh, the receivers to come out of that slant in a burst. You know what I'm saying? To whereas Gessie may have wanted them to come out with the tempo burst. You know, slowing it down. So it's a lot of things that they got to learn. Everybody's new in this offense, so yeah. it's it's a lot of learning, not just for Caleb but for everybody because it's new. It's a totally this, new this offense. Has, this has nothing to do with schedule, but it just came to my mind, so I figured I'd ask how how hard is it learning because this is essentially the same concept offense, right? It's still the same style of offense, but you would assume verbiage is different. You would assume what the coach is asking of you is different, and maybe it's not nothing major, but something simple, right? Um, what what is your how hard is it to learn the verbiage? Or, or I guess how hard is it to adjust to, like, this is the same offense, but I have to switch my brain and how things come in? 
Yeah, it's it's you know it's a lot of verbs. New offense, what you called something, you know what you called something in in the old offense, right? A slant may not be called a slant; it may be called a dart in this offense, you know. And and certain route concepts that you ran in your previous offense, it may be the complete opposite in this offense. Protections are different, you know. The backs may be required to get you know a different linebacker, you know, but it may be the same protection call. So it's just a matter of you know, what Waldron wants to do, how he wants to put this thing together. But right. the verbiage is definitely hard when you're when you're used to doing things a certain way. And I think the good thing is everybody's learning. So not just you have a rookie quarterback learning yeah. a new system. Yeah. You've got DJ Moore, a veteran, learning a new system. you got the offense line learning new protections. I mean, even Coach Morgan, the O-line coach, you know, has – I mean, he's going to have a lot of influence on the protections. So I'm not going to say those things are completely different, but – in terms of the way, you know, Coach Waldron wants the protections to match up with the route concepts, it may be different uh, from what they did last year. So everybody's learning, but that's the beauty of mini camps and OTAs. And, you know, we'll see how this record shapes out and see how, you know, quick these guys can have a grasp of it and, you know, see what type of product they can put on the field and see if we can go out there and just take hold of the schedule and, and get into the playoffs. Hey, man, listen, 17 and 0 starts today. Let's get that mug done. Yeah, I mean, Caleb, I'm looking at you, my guy. Rome, I'm looking at you. Austin, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at all the rookies like they're the ones that's going to make the biggest difference. I uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in to Show and Love. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Let us know your prediction in the comments below. Do you think the Chicago Bears will be better? Me and J-Mac both said 10 and 7. Different ways to get the 10 and 7, but we both said 10 and 7. Do you think the Bears will be better than 10 and 7 or worse than 10 and 7? Drop a B for better, W for worse in the comments below. Appreciate y'all for tuning in and showing love. Drop a bear down at a minimum. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear down. Peace. You got to get the full claw in that. Right there. Yeah. yeah, full claw.